This is lesson 7.2 on simple interest. What is interest? Uh, it is money either paid or earned on investments or loans. So it can be considered an expense or an income depending on who you are in the transaction. An example of when interest is an expense is if you're taking out a loan. So maybe you're, you are a university student and you take out a student loan, then your interest would be considered an expense because you're borrowing money and then when you pay that money back, you also have to pay an interest fee in addition to the original amount that you took out. It could be considered income when it's an investment. So for example, you might have a savings account with your bank and you have $1,000 in that account and you're earning 1% interest on it every month. That's not very much, but it's still considered income because you have this additional interest that's going in your account um, and they're paying you essentially for having your money with the bank. So interest can be either an expense or an income, depending on who you are in the transaction. Some different interest terminology. The word principal means the original amount of money, whether it was borrowed or invested. Principal is just the original amount. And then the interest rate is the rate that the interest is charged at, which is expressed as a percent. So it might be 2%, it might be 10%, it might be 0.5%. There's two main types of interest, simple interest, which we'll learn today. And this is when you earn interest only on your principal or original amount. And there's also compound interest. This you'll learn next year in grade 10. Compound interest is when you earn interest not only on your principal, but also on the interest that you're earning. You earn more money with compound interest and it's a lot more common, but we'll learn simple interest first as an introduction. The formula for simple interest is I equals P times R times T. These variables represent uh, what is written out here. So the I is the interest amount in dollars. So how much interest has been earned. P represents principal. What was the original amount of money in dollars? R represents the rate, the interest rate. Uh, and because interest rates are given in a percent, when you put it in the formula, you express it as a decimal. So if it's 10%, then it's 0.1 in the formula. If it's uh, 5%, then it's 0 0.05 when you put it in the formula. And then T represents time, which is expressed in years. So it's important to note that it's in years because if the question gives you a time length that is maybe in months or days, you need to convert it to years. So for example, if the time length was six months and there's 12 months in a year, then that would be one half, like half of the year. You wouldn't put six in there. A couple examples. So find the simple interest if $8,340 is borrowed for two years at 7.5% annually. So a reminder, the word annual means once a year and the interest rates are often given uh, per year. So to finish or to calculate this, we use the formula above, I equals P times R times T, and we just list the variables that we know. So do we know I? Do we know how much interest there is? No, that's what we're trying to find. So that's our question mark. P represents principal, the original amount of money. So this would be the $8,340, because that's what we're borrowing. R is the interest rate. This is written as 7.5%. But remember, we have to express it as a decimal. So we can convert it to a decimal by moving the decimal place two to the left, 0 0.075. Lastly, T represents the number of years, which is two. Once we have this information, we can plug it into our formula. So I equals all those things multiplied together, put it into your calculator, you get 1,251. So that's how much interest you would have to pay if you borrowed that much money for two years at 7.5%. You would not only have to pay the original amount back, you'd also have to pay that $1,200 as interest. Second example here, so with the same original amount, 8,340, what if instead it was borrowed for only seven months at 8% annually? Okay, well our P stays the same, 8,340. Our rate is slightly different, instead of uh, seven and a half, it's eight percent. So our rate is now 0 0.08. And the thing that's a bit tricky here is the time. Because remember, time is always in years. This is given in seven months. We don't put seven in for T because that would represent seven years. 
we had to write it as seven over 12 years because it's seven months out of 12 months. So you put it in as that fraction, throw that into your calculator and you get about $389. And that makes sense that this value is a lot less because it's only seven months when the other one was two years. So it makes sense that it's a smaller number. We can also use this formula to isolate for the other variables. So you can be given any three of these four variables and then rearrange to solve for whatever is missing. Some examples. Uh, what principal at 4.755% will earn interest of $27.15 in nine months? So it might sound like a lot of information, but again, we're just gonna use our formula. Let's write down what we know and what we don't know. So Principal is what we're looking for, because it's, it's asking right away, what is the principal? What principal would have this situation? So P is our unknown. Our rate is 4.75%, so we read it as 0 0.0475. Move the decimal place two to the left. Our time is nine months. Remember, we had to write it as years, so we write this as nine over 12. And lastly, our interest is $27.15. We know what our I is. So using our interest, our simple interest formula here, I equals P times R times T, just plug in what we know. We know I, we don't know P, we know R, we know T. So now we just have to rearrange to get P on its own. And we do this by doing the opposite operation. So each side is going to get divided by 0 0.0475 and by nine over 12. So I essentially just move them so they're not with the P anymore, and then they're gonna divide 27.15. Put that into your calculator and you get $762.11. So if you invested that much money for nine months at this interest rate, you would earn just over $27 in interest. Another example, find the interest rate required for $1,488 to earn $61.15 in 250 days. So write down what we know, what we don't know. We're looking for the interest rate so R is the unknown. It's the principal or the original amount of money is 1,488. And we wanna earn 61.15 in interest. So that's our I. The time is 250 days. So we write this as 250 over 365 because that's how many days are in a year. We plug what we know into our formula. So we know I, we know P, we don't know R, we know T. Then we just rearrange to get R on its own. So we would divide both sides by 1,488 and by 250 over 365. So we get R equals 0 0.06, but remember rates are always expressed as a percent. So this is actually 6%. I think this is the last example. Uh, we wanna determine the number of years required for a deposit of $1,850 to earn $249.75 interest at 4.5%. Write down what we know. Uh, we know that the interest rate is 4.5%, so it's written as 0 0.045. We know that the original deposit, or the original amount of money, is 1,850. That's our principal. And then the interest that we're given is 249.75. What we don't know is how many years this takes, so T is our unknown. We take our formula, we plug in what we know, we isolate for what we don't know, and we should get three. So it would take three years for that to happen. That's the end of our 7.2 lesson about simple interest.